Good morning. morning. We're the not, divine, in, not in the house. This is the Divine Fellowship outside version. Home yes. outside version. Home outside version. So We thought you would enjoy the change. I know we will. Do something different. It's finally warm enough and no wind. <laughs> it's pleasant outside, so and here we go. Hopefully we can keep the sun off of us so Gan doesn't squint, squint too, much too much. Or has to wear glass eye more shaded glasses or something. But. We'll see. Oh, we'll see. So I can wear my yard hat if I yes. need to yes. cut down on the light. But anyway, thought you'd enjoy the yard. Part of it. Part of it. It's just <laughs> there, and it's way over there. So actually, we'll show you once more people tune in. We'll go ahead and kind of do a little bit of a slow pan. Yeah, just why cause, not? Just of course, cause. that means we'll have to reset everything. But huh? We'll just try to swivel okay. it. See if we can just All swivel right. it. Well, we could do it now, and then. Um, only two people on. <laughs> so, we could do it for you. You're mm. worth it. And then whoever tunes in, you know, why wait? Why wait? You know. Hi, Lori. Hi, Daryl. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hmm. Or not. We or just not. won't. Oh. Whatever, Phil. Marlena. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil. I know. You all pray for me, right? Yes. I know you do. And we have uh, more uh, rompers that you could purchase if you really wanted to for, for your one of your children. grandkids. Yeah, for the Babies. grandkids. Great, grand, great grandkids. Yeah. So, this one says, could I be any cuter? Oh. Maybe I should have that one. You should have that one. We should make you a shirt of that. Uh -huh. uh, and this, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Oh, that, I know several little ones that could really. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Carol. Hi. Earn that one, huh? <laughs> and uh, unicorn princess. Mm -hmm. um, I must be special. Mommy said she's not having any more. <laughs> Wow. Said, my siblings have tails. Oh. <laughs> so. Kittens or puppies. Kittens or puppies. Or it could yes. be other critters. We have, you know, <coughs> little little baby lambs next door. And they might bleat here and there. They might. They it's kind of cute to hear them bleat. So, bleat. 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 Okay. B barley and oats. Barley and That's oats. That's their names. So barley and oats. I guess oats. Didn't, almost didn't make it, was born either premature or had a problem and they had to be bottle fed and all that kind of stuff. Oh. So, yeah. These guys are really sweet as far as rescuing yeah. critters. Like a good dog. <laughs> um, John Lennon, we have a patron saint, and George Carlin. Yeah. Oh, look. George Ooh. and John. Ooh. What? What am I looking at? It's the dog. Oh. Hi, dog. Hi, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and Delilah joins us. And Delilah joins us. Uh, so John said, time you enjoy wasting was not wasted. Amen to that. Yeah. I have a hard time with that one sometimes, but but I can do it. I'll get over it one day. Well, Phil, you know, you don't have a hard time with that. Yeah? Because you only do what you have an interest in. So it's not time wasted. Mm. You're thinking of sitting around doing nothing as wasting time. And that, yes, you have a hard time with it. You can't do that. <laughs> You can't even stay off your hurt foot. No, no. Um, and George said, yes. I think I am. Therefore, I am. I think. Hey, Christopher. Okay. Works for me. And let's see. What? Speaking of Christopher. Yes. Next oh. Sunday, um, Beth has put together a video of uh, a message Christopher has done some jokes that Phil has done and a guided meditation I've done. She's put that together as a our service for next time uh, because Phil and I are going to take a quick little break and much needed. We haven't done that in quite some time. A couple of years. So that will automatically show up on your news feed uh, at this place um, as a video at 10 o'clock uh, next Sunday morning. So you just click on it and it should just start right up and be ready to go. But Christopher's going to chat with us a little bit about letting go of worry. So, very timely even now. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. message from the Christopher. His stuff was always timely. Hey, Tracy. Yes. Hey, Scott. He was an amazing person. Cinderella slippers were originally made of fur. The story was inadvertently changed by a translator in the 1600s who confused the very similar old French word for glass and fur. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. So, makes more sense it had a fur instead of glass. Yeah. But. And women have been trying to wear 
glass slippers ever <laughs> since. <laughs> High heels are deadly. Gosh. Yeah. Um, things that make you go, hmm, hmm. But, uh, but desire of knowledge, like the thirst of riches, increases ever with the acquisition of it. <laughs> I like that. And the investigation of the meaning of words is the beginning of education. Antithony, Antithenes, uh, 365 BC. Actually, 445 to 365. Wow. Um, no. Yeah, 445 to 365. Oh, 445. Okay. Sorry. Uh, what does not destroy me makes me stronger. What we, does we, kill you makes you stronger. We moved that around a little bit, but that actually was from Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Nietzsche originally did that. Okay. So, uh, when a thing ceases to be a subject of controversy, it ceases to be a subject of interest. <laughs> Darn. For some people. For some people. For some people, that's the truth. <laughs> some people. Friendship that flowers from the heart cannot be frozen by adversity, as mm. the water that flows from the spring cannot congeal in winter. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Who in his pocket hath no money, in his mouth he must have honey. Say that one again. Who in his pocket hath no money, in his mouth he must have honey. Hmm. Okay, I get it. Yeah. All the beautiful sentiments in the world weigh less than a single lovely action. Oh. Nice. Nothing is more beautiful than the loveliness of the woods before the sunrise. Oh, unless it's the Lynch's backyard and their dog. Dog. She's chewing on a bone. Oh. Chew stick. I chew stick. Oh, is it chew stick? Okay. Yeah. Um, I run like the winded. <laughs> My jogging skills are a running joke. Oh. <laughs> Groan. In case you forgot to remind yourself this morning, your smile lights up the room. Oh. Your mind is insanely cool. You are way more than enough, and you are doing an amazing job at life. Take it on. Take it on. Sleep, sweet child, and dream all night. Wake up to the world so bright with peace and love for one and all, to every creature, great and small. Here's a promise just for you. You'll be loved your whole life through. Oh, that's very sweet. That very nice. true, too. Yeah. Hey, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird being the same age as old people. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. I hate to claim that one, but I know, it's true. I know. I'm old. I know. More things from uh, police departments and uh, goofy criminals. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not telling you where these are from because it really doesn't matter. So, a man walked into a Circle K, put a $20 bill on the counter and asked for change. When the uh, clerk opened the cash register, the man pulled a gun, asked for all the cash in the cash register, which the clerk promptly provided. The man took the cash from the clerk and fled, leaving the $20 bill on the counter. The total amount of cash in the drawer, $15. If someone points a gun at you and gives you money, was a crime committed? Hmm. 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 As a female shopper exited a convenience store, a man grabbed her purse and ran. The clerk called 911 immediately and the woman was able to give them the detailed description of the snatcher. Within minutes, the police had apprehended the snatcher. They put him in the cruiser, drove him back to the store. The thief was then taken out of the car, told to stand there for a positive ID. To which he replied, yes, officer, that's her. That's the lady I stole the purse from. <laughs> okay. 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 I had one more, but is that, are we good enough? Or you want me to just... Uh, you know, that's up to you, dear. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just take a moment and see if we can't... Pan. Pan this. We're going to try, we're going to try to do it slowly. Uh, you have to move your body. Well, and then everything, uh, nothing, it's being washed out. It's being washed out. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's okay. That's the, so, some of the rest of our yard. It's <laughs> coming along. Coming along. Coming we along. have more to do, but. A lot more to do. We always have a lot more to do. But so. it's fun. Yeah, it is. It's it fun. Is. So, so we're just going to, I'm going to leave it there for just a second, um, <laughs> but not too long, because then we have to kind of move it back because it actually goes quite a ways further the other way but that's okay this is good enough oh you're gonna lose it there. ah okay that's
to do Boy. Okay, okay, so. Uh, I guess I'm good, huh? I guess you're good. Okay, fine. I'll, uh, we'll readjust that one. And I won't be able that. to hear anything, so you really are going to have to yep. tell me. So, well, if you get anything in the, in, in the comments, you may have to monitor. Why? Okay. He's probably going to go look at cars on, online or something. That's what he does. So I have a really uh, cool, I think is a very cool process for you. Brand new. I've never shared it with anyone. Um, but before we start that, let's start with a, uh, a prayer, shall we? Mm -mm. I started just reading prayers as they... As they come turn a page this is coming from our prayers and gratitudes you can get a free copy online at thedivinefellowship.com there's a whole little section that says uh, free ebooks you can click on that and you can receive a copy of this if you would like it so this one is called a prayer for kindness and you'll see how this fits in as our message unfolds here in a bit <sighs> loving spirit of light Bring kindness into my world today. Help me recognize kindness when it appears in my behalf. Amplify that kindness and guide me to bestow it upon others. A kind word, an act of kindness, a kind thought, a prayer of compassion for another. Bring more kindness into this world and grant me the heart of compassion. May it be so. In the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. And our gratitude that goes with this, I am grateful for awakening to kindness in my life. That's our prayer and gratitude for today. So, <clears throat> the process I want to share with you today, oh my gosh, um, the phrase seal, heal, and bless came to me a couple weeks ago. And I thought, well, you know, that's that's wrong order. It should be heal, seal. You do healing and then you seal it and then you bless it, right? Whatever. <clears throat> no, it's seal, heal, and bless. And here's, here's the thing. It's really a very cool process. And it's called, um, let me get, I have many pages of notes here. Many pages of notes. Lots of notes. So I'll try not to read them all, but I wrote them down so that I could remember and, and have a foundation. Make sure that, uh, I had my thoughts in order, but we're going to create for ourselves a council of discernment, a council of discernment. And the reason that we're doing this is because we, as a humanity, we're suffering. And a lot of times it's the suffering over either something we've done and can't let go or something that was done to us and we can't let go. And it's creating a tremendous amount of suffering and weighs us down. We can't move forward. We can't draw that kindness to ourselves when we're burdened with all this suffering and pain. And I've showed you a lot of uh, processes in the past for relieving suffering, but this one is a whole different one on a whole different level. So I think you're gonna really like it. I'm gonna tell you about the process and then we're gonna walk you through it, okay? So, <clears throat> First thing to know, first thing to do is I want you to choose a situation that hurts, that's har that you feels harmful to you, that you feel is in the back of your awareness all the time, that you'd really like to let go, you'd really like to be clear of that. Uh, but for this point in time, it's just kind of there. Uh, or something that you've forgiven and comes back up and you forgive again and it comes back up or a sorrow or a pain or something like that. So notice something that uh, dealing with another human being, this is about interacting with another human being, that still causes you grief, that still causes you suffering, okay? <clears throat> and by identifying that first, then we're going to move into this process for the specifics, okay? Now, here's the thing. Here's the really cool thing about this process. You have, sorry, there was a bug. <laughs> you have guides, angels, and ancestors that are here to help you. And they help you in this physical realm. They help you 
they help guide you, they help encourage you. And we don't often know that they're there. We don't often experience them. It's not like uh, Uncle George steps up and go, hey, Janice, you might want to do this differently. You no, know, we don't get that. What we get is often a gentle nudge or something that catches our attention over here, brings us off of a, tr a mental track that we're on, shifts our thinking a little bit, or we just get a thought or a feeling of uh, paying attention to something else. Does that make sense? So those, but those guides and angels and ancestors are here and that's what they do for us. They're active. Um, so we're not walking this path alone. I see it feels alone, especially with <laughs> COVID and all of that sort of thing. It feels really kind of like we're all on a alone and especially when we've isolated so much recently. And the sad thing about that isolation is that we get used to it. And then it becomes uh, difficult to interact with people again, even though that's what we really need. Phil and I both have noticed that if we're interacting with people, even strangers, you know, in the grocery store or whatever, uh, our moods are elevated, our, our energies are activated. We as human beings thrive when we have clear connections with other people. So clearing our connections from things that have happened in the past are vital for our mental well-being, our physical well-being, our emotional well-being, and our spiritual well-being. And we have guides, angels, and ancestors to help us in that process. So, <clears throat> know this. Whatever that conflict you, ha you may have with that other person, they have guides, angels, and ancestors that are wanting to help them as well. Okay? And their wanting to help isn't wanting to perpetuate a trauma, perpetuate whatever they did or are doing or whatever. This is to help them get clear of that. So we're going to call a council of discernment. And this council of discernment is a, uh, a council room like, like a courtroom, only it's not judgment. This is not about judging that other person is wrong or being judged as wrong. This is a council of discernment. And this is a council chambers where all of your guides, angels, and ancestors and all of their guides, angels, and ancestors come together in your behalf to help you work through the trauma. How cool is that? So what we do is we create in our imagination a council room, huge, make it huge, because there's tons of, of beings that are going to be present in this experience. And there's the part of you that attends this is going to be the eternal part of you. Now there's, I don't know if I have a specific definition for you, but it seems to me that there is an eternal part of us that is always unharmed by life circumstances. And then there's the part of us that's the human uh, incarnated aspect that suffers greatly. So the part of us that doesn't suffer is going to go into this council chamber. And the part of us that is this conscious awareness that it feels all that suffering doesn't have to. This is all going to be done in a spiritual realm and all done on a cosmic level. So we don't have to anguish about it. You don't have to see that other person again. Just know that by calling them out, their eternal part of them, all of their guides, all of their angels, and all of their ancestors are going to be there to help them become accountable. And your soul spirit that is eternal and all of your guides, angels, and ancestors are going to be here to help you become accountable and help you heal. Both have healing to do about. If there's a, a difficulty between you, there's healing is necessary. Okay? And and on whole different levels. Make sense? So, your higher consciousness, that eternal part of you, is calling this, or your consciousness is calling this council of discernment, and your higher awareness is going to go into that council chambers. And you're calling that other person's higher consciousness that knows full well what they did 
and knows full well what the consequences of all of that are and knows full well the suffering that you've experienced or the suffering that you've caused, whatever. And you're going to go into the council chambers and you're going to see double doors close. And you're going to seal that. You're going to seal those council chambers while this process is going on. Two things I want you to know about that. Your guides, angels, and ancestors can still come and guide you. They're not locked in this room and you're bereft of their guidance. They can come in and participate with you. But there is an element that is going to be there that is going to work this stuff out in your behalf. And same with the other person. So you're not going to be in any way, shape, or form harmed or damaged or less than while this is going on. Second thing I want you to know is the seal we're going to put on here is an angelic seal. And this angelic seal I've used in the past when I've had to work with some really dark things and I've had to seal them from human interaction. So these, this angelic seal uh, is really powerful, really powerful. And that can look a lot of different ways. Sometimes they look like a giant manhole cover with angelic writing on it. Sometimes they're golden. Sometimes they're just luminous energy. Sometimes they're, they're like a big, like I said, a, a manhole cover, just round and flat. And they just stick on the, uh, the chamber doors and, and seal that in. So whatever you choose for yourself, or whatever comes in your imagination, that's what you're going to do. You're going to experience. So ask your angels to seal this Council of Discernment. And as you ask them to seal this Council of Discernment, they're going to put a seal on this door. So just be aware of what that is. Because it's powerful stuff. Just know that it's really, really powerful stuff. That's the... Seal, heal, and bless are the three steps to this. So that's the seal part. We've called a council. Um, we're aware of what's going on, a situation, and we've sealed that. Now, all of those beings are going to talk to each other. You know, what was the deal? Why did this come from? What's going on with that? Um, and sometimes things that happen in this physical realm are as a result of karma. You know, past life stuff. And so your, your ancestors are going to have information about that. And sometimes it uh, has to do with, you know, your spiritual growth. So your angels are going to know about that. And sometimes it just has to do with mistakes that we've made or mistakes that other people made. And your guides are going to understand about that. So they're going to all chat about that. They're going to talk about it. They're going to work it out and really take a look at it. Oftentimes when we have suffering and pain... We can't look at it. It's too painful to even consider. Well, they're going to do all that for you. So in the meantime, as that's going on, then it's it creates for us a healing. Um, let me check my notes here. Oh, it's, it's all about, it's not about right and wrong. This is about discerning what's going on. This is not about he did this and I did that and she did this and they did that. It's not about that. It's about what am I learning in this? What's the point? If everything happens for our benefit, then what the heck happened? Why did that happen to me? Okay? So that's, being, that's what's being discussed. Why? The, the purpose of it. So what happens as they're talking that stuff out... It moves us out of judgment. I don't have to be in judgment of that person anymore. I don't have to feel judged by that person anymore. I get to be free of that. And because it's in this sealed uh, council of discernment, I don't even have to think about it anymore. It's being handled. And I can just allow it to be. And the, the, the good thing about this discernment is that discernment sees the difference between good and evil. Discernment can see the truth of it. 
It's not about you're bad or I'm bad or the other person's bad. It's not about good and bad. It's about discernment. It's about seeing the truth of it. And if we see the truth of it, it sets us free. Isn't that the truth of it? Um, so when we call this counsel now, you're going to instruct, even though we've got it sealed, you're still in contact with a part of you that's eternal. You're going to speak your truth about it. And you're going to ask your eternal self that's in that council chamber to speak your truth about it. So, <clears throat> your truth though. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the suffering that we can't find the truth to it. So, so let's say somebody betrayed you. So, um, in stepping out of shame and blame, and we speak our truth, we could say, I trusted that person with my heart, with my truth. Zip it. That's all. They betrayed me. Nope. Stop it. It's not about what they did. What is your truth? I trusted you with my heart. I trusted you with my truth. Maybe somebody um, did violence to you. What was your, what's your truth about that? I'm innocent. I was your victim. Make sense? You took my innocence. Find your truth. And in that truth, there is no shame and no blame. Got it? This is key. This is key. And their spirit guides and angels and ancestors all well, they they know what they they know what they did. There's no need to address that. The eternal part of them knows what they did. So we're stepping out of the shame and the blame part. You're just speaking your truth. And let that hash it out and let it go. And at the same time, that other person's spirit eternal self is going to speak their truth whatever that is not not the justification that maybe you've heard in the past but speaking their truth I was hurting and I couldn't go another step without hurting somebody in return you know cruelty begets cruelty I couldn't take life anymore so I took it out on someone that's the truth and their soul will find the truth of it and speak it, and then the council again will communicate with that. They'll review, discuss, consider, and discern what's best for each of you. What's best for each of you so, so you can grow, learn, and heal. Again, it's not about judgment or determining who is wrong or punishment, but it's how to best help each of you learn, heal, and grow. And sometimes this process takes a day or two, maybe three, Often it's instantaneous. You may already be feeling some relief from this experience. And as they're hashing stuff out, you're now going to start having uh, insights instantly. Maybe healing. Maybe feeling renewed energy, a blessing energy. Maybe you'll just know that the other person just fell into ego and they didn't honor your trust because they wanted everybody to like them. You know, whatever. Uh, maybe you'll just feel free. And knowing that you truly have been heard. You're really going to be heard. Because sometimes when we have a conflict for someone with someone, we can't talk to them. We don't get the chance to talk to them. Either they can't hear us or they won't hear us. Or we're too afraid to, to speak up. So you'll have this, this opportunity. You're being heard. In this moment, right now, you're being heard completely and understanding in an understanding and discerning way. And the healing happens. Um, so you, your ancestors will take, take uh, action in this. 
if this is a, a karmic thing and your ancestors were involved in this, this is something they can, they can mitigate for you, mediate for you. Maybe now you're going to see some subtle red flags that you missed before. Oh, you know, I should have known I couldn't trust that person. Or, oh, you know, I felt something was off and I didn't pay attention. Make sense? And you're going to notice that and you're going to discern who you can trust and can't trust. Or you're going to discern when you're safe or not safe in the future. Can't be on guard. No, because when we're like this, we're not going to really be able to have the influence that the ancestors, guides, and angels are wanting to give us because we're too busy being spun up and strung out. But baby, relaxed, relaxed and open, then we can receive that. Does that make sense to you? Sometimes people just get in a place where they just don't trust anybody ever again. Well, that's, um, that means you're stuck in judgment. Because true discernment says there are people that are untrustworthy and there are people I can trust. And true discernment will, you know, will, will clue you into that. Sometimes we just have such open hearts that we trust everybody. Everybody's going to be good. Everybody's going to be kind. No, they're not. And discernment takes us out of that Pollyanna thinking and into this space where we're noticing and we're aware. And that way we don't expect, those darned expectations again, that way we don't expect somebody to act in a certain way when they may not be capable of it yet. And then we end up getting hurt, but it's their fault they're mean. Uh-uh, it's not how that works. Darn it, I want it to be their fault. Um, Maybe you'll come to a perspective where you'll, you'll see that their guides, angels, and ancestors are taking them to task. This is not okay. What you did was not good. You can do better. So bringing it into their conscious awareness and giving them some different tools or different life experiences that grant them tools. We get tools when we experience things and learn. So they're going to probably be bringing things into their life that helps them learn a whole different lesson on a whole different level. And maybe you're going to discern that that other person was really suffering, really hurting, really broken. And so maybe their guides and angels are going to bring them a whole other level of healing. Either way. They, maybe they'll get something, their guides, angels, and ancestors are working, so they'll get something that will help them heal from whatever led them to their actions. Make sense? That's the heal part. Are you already feeling the healing? I hope so. If not, know that this is a huge process, and there's lots of conversation going on uh, in the ethereal realms right now and it could take up to three days so just be patient and just be open anytime this thought comes to your mind and you find yourself angry about it or resentful about it or bitter about it or pained or anguished about it remind yourself that's sealed in the, the council of discernment and I'm letting that go for now I'm giving it up to them. And you send it into that council chamber. Send that thought, send that feeling into the council chamber. The, um, the third step of this process is bless. Seal, heal, and bless. I'm looking at time, okay. And this is the tricky part. Um, you can't do the bless until you've had the heal because the healing will allow you to move into a state where you can bless, bless yourself, bless the situation, bless the other person. There's a Bible verse I want to read to you. Um, this is Luke chapter six. Um, oh. chapter six, verse 28. 
bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. So if you've received a mistreatment, there goes a the dog, bless and pray. That's your part. I know, I don't like it either. I'd rather blame and get irritated, <laughs> but we don't get to. Not if we want to be healthy, not if we want to be happy, not if we want to be blessed. Now here's the thing, one more verse. The next chapter over, uh, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They will pour into your lap. For what measure, whatever measure you deal out to others, it will be dealt to you in return. You give it back. So if you're gonna, this is the time to bless, even though it feels uncomfortable, maybe. You're used to hating that person. You're used to resenting that person. But it's time to shift that thinking. And it's time to bless and pray. So let me coach you through that. Because this is tricky stuff. Here, and it's also fun. This is so fun. You're going to love this. So blessing isn't just carte blanche, giving them whatever they want. Hey. Phil's going to get the dog. Uh, I actually can hear you. Okay. Oh, that's next door. That's their dog. Okay, you stay here and keep them quiet. Okay. Um, so the blessing process. They'll quiet down in a minute. Leave it, Lila. Leave it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <clears throat> um so, blessing. Had to get on the right page. Sorry for the distraction. So here's what we do. We bless that other person and say things like this. May you discover honor. Holy cow! Did you feel that? How about this one? May you find the heart of a servant. So maybe somebody mistreated you, used you. May you find and discover the heart of a servant. It's a blessing. A blessing, oh, hundredfold. But you're giving them the opportunity to see what it's like to be coming from a place of power, from the sweetness of being kind. Maybe they were unkind before. But you're going to bless them into that process. How cool is that? How about this one? May you know the joy of serving others. Takes that whole thing and shifts it, does it not? May you find your own innocence. Oh, wow. Powerful. Wow. Maybe you realize the sweetness of innocence. Because if they realize it, they won't take it away from anybody else ever again. May you recognize the value of truth. Did somebody lie to you and you were harmed by their untruth? May you recognize the value of truth. You're empowering them to awakening. Which protects you and protects others and blesses them. Pray and bless. We're doing it. May you realize the power of selflessness. Most people do stuff out of stupid ego, don't they? May you realize the power of selflessness. May you feel the blessings of loyalty. Let me see if I have any more. I think I do. May you cherish peace. Maybe somebody's just this drama person that everything's got to be a turmoil and they got to suck you into it. May you cherish peace. May you find acceptance. Have you had somebody that's really critical? They're probably really critical of themselves too. May you find acceptance.
May you discover the heart of wonderment. Somebody bitter and just cranky all the time and resentful. That wonderment. Oh, I wonder what this day has to hold. I, I wonder what joy I can find today. That's wonderment. May you discover the heart of wonderment. May you learn to treasure each day. For somebody that just has to make your day, has to rain on every day, that's a parade. May you be uplifted into joy. May love grant you peace. May you be strengthened with courage. If someone has used physical force on you, that's not courage, that's just force. But if people find courage, they no longer have to do that sort of thing. May you find courage. And here's the kicker. May you awaken. Because when people awaken, they don't hurt one another. And if you feel as if you were the one that was at fault, you can say these same blessings for yourself. So it would be, may I discover honor. Lead me to honor. Lead me to the heart of, of being a servant. Help me to know the joy of serving others. Help me to reconsider my own innocence. Help me to discover the sacredness of innocence. Help me recognize the value of truth. Help me to realize the sacredness of selflessness. Help me to feel the blessings of loyalty. Help me to cherish peace. Help me to find acceptance. Help me to, to discover the heart of wonderment. Help me to learn to treasure loyalty. Help me to be uplifted into joy. Help love to grant me peace. Help me be strengthened with courage. Help me awaken. Powerful, beautiful. We're going to take a break here in a minute. And uh, we're going to do communion. And then I want to get back. And if you have a specific situation that you're struggling with, either your truth or the healing or the blessing. Let me know. I'm going to help you with this. This is extremely important and extremely powerful. You don't have to give me the whole, whole big deal, but um, I'll, we'll Reader's Digest version and we'll see what we can do. Okay, make sense? So let me get a hold of Mr. Phil because he cannot hear me from here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Didn't mean to get my face right in the camera. <laughs> Are you in? I'm in. He's in. No, you're not. I don't see the bird bath. No birds today for some yeah. reason, but we had a whole herd of uh, uh, crowned sparrows that, oh man, they were chirping up a storm and forty or fifty of them at a the time. In the bird bath, just splashing. I had to refill the bird bath what, four or five times a day. Anyway, all right. So with all that that we had going on, communion. This is how we commune with divine source, where there's nothing but healing, nothing but love, nothing but light all the time. Join us in prayer, prayer please. Loving spirit of light, as we utilize this council of discernment, grant us healing awaken us to a greater measure of joy and peace help us these things we pray in the name of the ascended one jesus amen, amen. prayer again please loving spirit of light as we drink this in Help us to drink in this discernment. Help us to see things from the perspective of truth. Help us to perceive things in the perspective of love. 
and bring to us in greater measure the love that we can bestow as a result of this discernment. These things we pray in the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Beth. Oh, yes, Beth. And, and um, actually, think about it. Um, I, we've been talking about, you know, opening up again. And as much as we actually kind of enjoy doing this, um, we are going to obviously open the church back up. And um, I think it's going to be about the time that I had kind of guessed around the first of the year, you know, June. June-ish. So we're hoping in the next couple of weeks to get to be... <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's our Joke understanding, our, our understanding that the uh, you know this, the state has to kind of catch up with what the CDC is doing. But I, I do know that these even through the state right now, that if you're if you've if been uh, vaccinated, there are no limits um, as far as being in the church. So, but we're still not sure what that means. We can't can't get a clarification on that. But so, th so as things change, you know. Well, so we're going to take a bit of a break. You're going to watch next week's video of Christopher. And then uh, hopefully we'll have more information on the following Sunday for you. So <clears throat> I think there are people that had issues or questions they wanted to have assistance with. So if you would go back and check on that, Mr. Phil. I have to move? I know it's lovely out here. No, it really is. It's great. Yeah. We spend a lot of time just... <sighs> Connect with me when you get back there so I don't do it too early. So again, if you have a situation that you're struggling with, please let me know. Let me help you. This is big stuff. It's new stuff. Never been explored before. So um, I want to help you with all of this. All right. Sign in use. I'm going to turn it off. There we go. Waiting for Phil. Are you there? Um, I muted you somehow. Gotcha. Oh, okay. There you are. <laughs> give, me a, give me a second here now that I've been paying attention to that. Um, okay. Oh, you must have the... There? What? Um, I mean... uh, why did you do that? Oh, okay. Good. Honey, would you turn your speaker off of the computer? Oh, yeah, hold on a second. <laughs> so we're getting all this extra sound. Okay, okay, got the, I got that turned off, so now you should be able to hear me. Yes, I, I can. Okay. Okay. Let me see where... Uh, and you can just look at the pretty scenery while you wait. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Let me get back back down to the bottom here somewhere. Okay. Because I think there were a couple. Uh, Carol was saying she felt like three people were competing for resolution. I wouldn't be surprised. People on the other side, our guides, angels, and ancestors, want resolution, want us to get healed, want us to resolve this. And they're going to work it out on our behalf. This is big stuff really big stuff and that's why sometimes it takes a couple of days for all this to process out and what that process looks like is you're just going to go on about your day you're just going to do what you do but you'll have insights or flashes of inspiration or you'll just have a sense of things working themselves out and sometimes that working themselves out you find yourself having compassion for yourself in that situation, that other person on a whole level that you didn't even know was possible. Okay. Hey, uh, Sandy said the ceiling and blessing came easily. The healing part was difficult to feel and hear. Uh, tell me more about the healing part. So it's just going to take time. Uh, your guides and angels and ancestors are working in your behalf. So that healing is happening on an ethereal realm. Your part is to let it go. Your part is to speak your truth and let it go. And they will in turn then bring you new insights that will heal you. That will heal your perspective of that past situation. 
I hope that is helpful. If you give me a specific, then I can give you maybe a specific thing for you to look for. Okay. Um, Maria said that you are familiar with her concern. Oh, where to go? I uh, just jumped. Um, she would she would appreciate any insights. Okay. So yes, I am familiar with your situation. So you could begin to have a perception that there's old damage here. This may be past life stuff. And with that understanding of past life stuff, the ancestor guides and angels can bring that to that person's awareness on a different level now. And you don't have to be angry about it anymore. You don't have to suffer anymore. So even though this person may be acting in a way that in the past has caused you pain, you can just go, oh, look, there it is again. And you become neutral. Because guides, angels, and ancestors on both sides have heard you. And they're working in your behalf. So you can just let it go. And know that the change of behavior can come when they're done working with them. And they are working on him. And have a clearer perspective of that. So, make sense? So your, your, heal, your healing aspect could be, uh, I'm aware that this is his old stuff. And your blessing can be something to the effect of, May you find trust for your own soul. Or may your soul rest with trust in your heart. Something of that nature. May trust and acceptance be yours. May you be blessed with restored innocence and restored trust. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Hope it does. Let me know. You're welcome. Okay, anything else, Mr. Bill? Nope, Hill? nothing so far. Nothing so far. Oh, boy. Um, if you do have issues with this and you want to chat with me more about it, you can send me an email. I'd be happy to take a look at it. The best one to reach me is I am Janice Lynch at Frontier.com. I have another one, but the I am Janice Lynch at Frontier.com works. I go there fastest, so. Anyway, if you would be interested in having some more, uh, what if the person has passed? The guides, angels, and ancestors are still there. They're still alive on the other side. But you're looking to heal you, and you're looking to heal your perspective. perspective. You're asking for discernment that sets you free. You'll know the truth and truth shall set you free. Make sense? So the process is the same. Their soul is still alive on the other side. So there's still healing that can be done, still awareness that can be brought to bear. Um, if you want to discuss that private situation with me, again, email me or, or you can text me um, Facebook wise. That's I could that's message me. I mean, um, Marlena just asked, uh, what if the person has passed? I was just oh. discussing that. Oh, sorry. No glasses I can actually see. No. Hmm. What a concept. You don't need me anymore. I do need you. Always do. <laughs> Just not for that. Hmm. Okay. Um, anything else we need to discuss? Oh, this is really big stuff. Thank you for uh, participating in this first time ever experience of this. Love it. I love doing new stuff. Um, hmm. <laughs> I think we're done for the day. That was big stuff. New stuff. There's new energy on the horizon. I think there's so much suffering on our planet right now. And it's time for us to let that go. It's time to move into a place of joy. And a place of harmony. And a place of, of bless and be blessed. So let's, yeah, take me to Lynn. I get you, Tracy. So let's uh, wrap up with an energy circuit, closing an energy circuit. So you're connected to the divine source. You're still connected into that council of discernment and that the power.
power of guides and angels and ancestors knowing that they're there here on your behalf. Isn't that wonderful? Bring that awareness into your heart space. It's in your mind now. It's in your heart space now. Now bring that from your heart space. I think this is your left hand and to the right hand. For me, it's the opposite. Bringing that energy in and then letting it flow and then back to the heart. That completes this energy circuit of this heart space, of the, the heart. This is your compassion circuit. And as you complete this compassion circuit, energy begins to build in your hands. And as this energy builds in your hands, it amplifies and grows. And now you can take this energy glowing ball of light that you're creating with a combination of your intent and divine source. It's unlimited energy. You can send this energy to someone who might need it. Maybe it's someone you know that's suffering, that is, is really struggling with an old sorrow or an old pain. Maybe it's uh, someone that harmed you and they're suffering and that's why they harmed you. Whatever feels right to you. Maybe it's just sending it out into the world that is so much in pain and suffering right now. So take that energy and release it out into the world. Let it go. We don't want any psychic backwash. Fresh, bright energy in, bring it into the heart space, left hand to right hand, or whichever way your camera works. And letting that energy build again. And again, this unlimited energy from divine source, coupled with your intent, builds this sphere of light, this compassion. Bring this extra measure of compassion into your own heart space. And may you be a blessing in the world. God bless you. Take good care. And we'll see you soon.